Let's begin with understanding what is sorting. Many times we will need to arrange the items in certain order, say ascending or descending order because it makes it easy to locate any item when it is in sorted list. So there are many ways in which we can implement this uh, sorting through programming and this is what we call as sorting algorithms. So bubble sort is nothing but it starts by comparing the first element of the array with the second element. Suppose we are sorting the elements in ascending order, then the first element if it is greater than the second element, then the two elements will be swapped with each other. That means smaller element will be taken towards the left side of the array. So in this way we will be swapping based on the greater or lesser element and the array will be sorted at the end of the iteration. Uh, let's understand this by writing the C program. So here we can see the program for bubble sorting. So first let's understand the flow of this bubble sorting. How does the sorting occurs in bubble sorting? For example, let's consider we have these numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers in our array. So this is our array. So we have entered the array in unsorted way and we need to get the sorted array at the end of this. So how do we achieve it? How does the bubble sorting work here is? So in the first iteration, we have written two for loops to do this. So just understand the basic of uh, this logic and then we will get into the program and, and see each of the line and what it is doing. So what we are doing, we are having, suppose if we have seven elements, we will, we will be having seven rounds of comparison. So in each round, we will be comparing each element with the other element. For example, in the first round, we will be starting with the first and second element. You can observe here, our unsorted list is having 5, 3, 1, 9, 8, 2, 4 and 7. Now in the first round, what is happening is 5 and 3 will be compared. Assume that we are making it into ascending order. So we want to convert this array of items into ascending order. So first we will begin with first element and second element. So this 5 and 3 will be compared. Since 5 is greater than 3, it will be swapped. That means we will be swapping 3 to the place of 5 and 5 to the place of 3. And the rest of the elements will be as it is. Till here it is only one round. Okay. So in one round, we will be having these many times of comparisons. So in first round, it first time it is first two elements. Second time it is second and third element. So now three will be as it is, five and one will be compared. Since five is greater than one, five and one place positions will be swapped. So we will be getting one and five like this. And rest of the elements are same. Now again, three and one are already sorted. So 3 and 1 will be as it is. Now 5 and 9 will be compared. So 5 is not greater than 9. So the position will not be swapped. So it will be as it is. Okay. Now in the next time, what is compared is 9 and 8 is compared. So here 5 and 9 was compared. Now here 9 and 8 is compared. These things will remain same. And since 9 is greater than 8, it will be sorted. So these elements will be as it is. Now what happens 9 and 2 will be compared in the next time. So we have 3, 1, 5, 8 as it is. And since 9 is greater than 2, 9 will be swapped with 2. So 2 comes here and 9 here. Now, now 9 and 4 will be compared. So what happens 3, 1, 5, 8, 2. Since 9 is greater than 4, we'll have 4 here, 9 and 7. Now in the last time, since uh, we will be comparing till the last element will is compared with the last but one element. So that is why we are having j from 0 to 7. That means j will be incremented from 0 to 6. So that it compares all the elements with the other elements towards its right. Okay. Now it is 5, 8, 2, 4. Since 9 and 7 are compared, 9 is the largest number. So 7 and 9. So here we need to observe one thing. So what you need to observe is at the end of first round, 
the last element whatever we are getting will be the largest of all these numbers because it will be compared with all the numbers and we will be pushing it towards the right in all the iterations so at the end of first round we will be getting the largest of all these numbers now since we know that the last element is the largest we need not compare it with the other elements in the next rounds so what we do is we only take these numbers now for the comparison in the second round so now when we come to the second round so let's say in the second round this is round 1 now let's say round 2 now how many elements are left for sorting now it's only 3 1 5 8 2 4 and 7 because 9 we already know that it is sorted and we need not take that for consideration it will just be there okay now as it is it starts with first and second element it's comparing 3 and 1 uh, 3 is greater than 1 and so we'll have them swapped so 1 3 5 8 and rest of them as it is so 9 will be there just imagine it is there so we are only considering this so i am going to write only these many numbers now in the second time 3 and 5 is compared 1 is as it is since 3 and 5 in the right order that means lesser one is on the left side and the greater one is in right side so it it will it's not swapped now it is written as it is now 5 and 8 will be compared so we have 1 3 5 8 as it is because it is in the right order now in the next time 8 and 2 will be compared so now what happens is 2 will be swapped with 8 and we know now as it is we'll have 1 3 5 2 8 and 4 will be compared so what we'll get is 1 3 5 2 4 8 7 8 now 8 and 7 will be compared so finally what we have is 1 3 5 2 4 7 8 8 and, and now we need to observe that here the last number is greatest of all the remaining numbers so at the end of the second round we are sorted that 8 is the next largest number to 9 so we need not compare this 8 with any other numbers now it is already sorted out so we have 9 and 8 clearly at the end so by the end of second round we have sorted the two largest number at the end now in the third round we need to compare only these numbers so that's why here if you observe j's count j is nothing but the number of times we are comparing the number of elements in the list we are comparing that is it is going on reducing in the rounds so let's understand how in coding we need to write this condition to get this sorted array so let's come here and begin with the with our main function so since we need an array we have declared an array and we have given size as 100 and now we need n because we need to ask the user to enter how many numbers they want to sort the user can opt for any number if they want to sort 10 numbers then they'll enter n as 10 or if they want to sort 5 elements then 5 so it all depends on what number of elements we will be sorting in the array so it we we need to scan it into this variable n now we need to ask the user to enter the numbers one by one so that's why we have given slash n and it will be taken into n what we have written is enter percentage d numbers and here what we are displaying is n n means suppose the user has entered 7 now we will be displaying enter 7 numbers that's why we have written percentage d and n here okay this n will be displayed here now we need to scan the numbers that the user has entered so what we do we use a for loop that starts from 0 till n and then increments so we are scanning this into our array and array of i so when i is 0 the first element that the user is entering will be taken into the zeroth index likewise all the numbers that are entered will be stored into this array now we need to check for this conditions like we need to check the first element with second and then swap so for this we need two for loops this is for loop 1 and this is for loop 2 the first for loop is for incrementing i from 0 to 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 that means seven times we need to do this calculations comparisons so that's why we need this outer for loop so you can see here we have written it for i 
now the inner for loop we need the inner for loop for every increment of i we need j to increment for these many times in the first case j will be from 0 to 6 the second case j will be from 0 to 5 the third case j will be from 0 to 4 the fourth case 0 to 3 likewise we need to increment j based on the increment of i so what we have to do is we need to have one more for loop inside this outer for loop so this we have written as j is equal to 0 j less than n minus i minus 1 so why we got this n minus i minus 1 is that's that is what i explained here because in after every round we need to compare one uh, number less that is after every round one number will be sorted out so that's why we need to decrease it by one and why do we have this i here is because it, it depends on which i value we are having at that round for example if we are having i 0 and j should be incrementing from suppose i is 0 j will be incrementing from 7 7 is our n so 7 minus 0 minus 1 so j will be incremented from 0 to 6 that's what it is written here so that is why we need to write it n minus i minus 1 and we will be incrementing j and here comes the main logic so what we are doing here we need, we are checking array of j is if it is greater than array of j plus 1 that means array of j is greater than j plus 1 j plus 1 is the next element now if it is greater we only then we need to exchange since it is since we are sorting it in ascending order so if it is for descending order we just have to make this as less than so if it is descending order the highest number should come towards your left at the beginning so at that time we need to have less than here that's it it will be sorted in ascending or descending based on the this condition now we are checking if it is greater than the next number if it is greater then only it enters here and here we are swapping it so we have an uh, variable called swap which we have declared here so what we are doing we are just keeping this 5 somewhere here okay for example now 5 is greater than 3 since 5 is greater than 3 we need to put 3 to the place of 5 suppose this is how we are having 5 and 3 now after comparing we want 3 to come here so uh, suppose this is area of 0 0 th position and this is first position now if we swap this what we have to do is we cannot directly say that a of 0 is 3 and a of 1 is 5 because we don't know what the number is this logic does not know what number it is right it only knows when it is stored somewhere so in order to put the values here we cannot assign directly like a of 0 is a of 1 a of 1 is a of 0 because th that time it will become both as 3 so now what we have to do is keep this 5 somewhere else say we are keeping it in this variable now this variable is holding 5 we can fill this place with 3 so what we are doing in swap we are keeping this 5 so 5 is there in the swap now array of j we are filling it with the next digit so our next digit is 3 so now array of j is having 3 now we are, since we have put this 3 here and we come to this place now now array of j plus 1 will be we will put this 5 back here so what happens after this array of j will be having 3 j plus 1 will be having 5 so this is how we need to swap the numbers and the condition for doing that is only if the first number is greater than the second number now at the end of this we will be having the sorted array at the end of this loop we will be printing the sorted array like this so here we will be using the for loop and then printing the elements so let's run this program and see how we are getting the values so let's run it and here is our console it's asking to enter number of elements let's let's enter these numbers and see the result okay so we need to sort how many elements are there here how many numbers are there we have 0 to 7 that means we have 8 numbers so let's say 8 now we need to enter so let's enter 5 3 1 
nine eight two four and seven so we got the sorted array now see we have got one two three four five seven eight nine this is how the bubble sorting algorithm works so the numbers we have entered is in unsorted way and at the end the result is in sorted list thank you all